is David is, is my co. He's now uh, uh, postdoc, balsam postdoc at IMPA. And then I follow the instruction of the coordination to do some propaganda about these uh, fellowships. <laughs> the, the, uh, please, uh, David, you can. Uh, so first of all, thank you for the postdoc and uh, for the opportunity uh, to give this talk. Uh, well, squared tile surfaces and generating the symmetric group. A squared tile surface, uh, or else an origami, is just a covering of the torus, possibly ramified above the origin. So we remember that the torus is just a square uh, with uh, two uh, opposite sides glued. And uh, um, so if we consider the pre-images of the square for the torus, uh, we will get that an origami can be viewed as a finite collection of copies of the unitary Euclidean square that are glued following the, uh, the rules, following two rules, that the right edge of each square is glued to the left edge of some square, <coughs> and uh, the top edge of each square is glued uh, to the bottom edge of some square. So uh, that's why actually origami are were initially called square tile surfaces, and they were first considered uh, by Thurston and Witch mm, during their works on the modular space of curves. You can see examples of origamis, uh, just to say that uh, here on this picture, this side is glued to this one, and this side is glued to this one. So sides with no, opposite sides with no marking uh, are glued. And uh, the trivial origamis are origamis of, uh, as surfaces of genus one, they are torus actually, uh, these origamis are uh, surfaces of genus two. Uh, tres origamis, uh, gen the gen genera uh, vary, it's equal to N, and the origamis uh, are of genus N, these ones. An origami is a particular case of Translation surface. A translation a translation surface is uh, a finite set of polygons with identifications of pairs of uh, sides by translation. Right. So for the squares in the previous definition, uh, the, uh, the si sides are glued as well by translation. Uh, a connected uh, translation surface is uh, also given by a pair of uh, uh, a compact connected Riemann surface and a holomorphic one form, right? So uh, all all translation surfaces, all connected translation surf surfaces, are divided into strata. So in each uh, in in a, in a strata, which is denoted like this. H uh, with parameters d1, etc., ds, uh, one finds translation surfaces uh, which are uh, which are presented by pairs m omega, and omega is uh, a one f a, a holomorphic one form uh, having s zeros of orders d1, etc., ds. Otherwise, um, one thinks of translation surfaces as of uh, uh, surfaces with flat metric everywhere except of S points uh, with a conical angle two pi times uh, with conical angles two pi times, for instance, d1 plus one or D2 plus one. This surface, for example, 
it, it belongs to the stratum uh, it belongs to the stratum H2 uh, because it has only one conical uh, singularity uh, and of angle uh, 6 pi right so uh, the definition of uh, a square tall surface as a ramified covering of a torus um, can be can easily gives another definition of uh, the origamis which are primitive an origami covers another origami if uh, this this diagram this diagram commutes for possibly ramified covering uh, p and the square tall surface is called primitive if uh, there is no intermediate coverings except of uh, the torus itself and uh, and uh, the surface, so except of two trivial coverings. Okay. <coughs> For instance, uh, the origami covers this one, and it's not so. It's not. It's not primitive. Well, uh, translation surfaces uh, are kind of wide notions. Uh, they are not as easy to describe as uh, square tall surfaces. Why? Because square tall surfaces uh, correspond to just two pairs of permutations up to conjugation uh, in, uh, in the symmetry group. Uh, namely, if we consider the squares from which, uh, of which the square tall surfaces is made, uh, then, and, and we look at the, at the identifications, horizontal and vertical, right? And also, if we number the squares by uh, integers from 1 to n, then it will give us two permutations. One indicating how the squares are glued in the horizontal direction, another one indicating how the squares are glued in the vertical direction. So will be two permutations from the group, from the symmetric group Sn, and uh, uh, to be to, to make to make a bijection, one has to uh, one has to consider ex inst instead of the pairs of permutations, conjugate the classes of the pairs of, uh, of permutations. Why? Because uh, initially squared tau surfaces don't depend on the numbering of the squares. You have an example here. So, uh, an important notion, uh, an important invariant, I will uh, explain why I'll call, I call it an invariant uh, further, is uh, the notion of the monogamy group of a square tall surface. It is easily defined in terms of uh, permutations. So if we have a, a square tall surface and a pair of the permutations encoding the square tall surface, then uh, the group generated by the two permutations uh, is called the monogamy group of the square tall surface. So it's a permutation group, a subgroup of Sn. And uh, mm, here it is. It is defined. It is defined by uh, not up to conjugation, but actually, uh, in 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 a lot of cases, we consider such a group as a an, as an abstract group. Uh, pre more precisely, more precisely, if one has a finite two generator group G, a pair of generators of the group G, and uh, a faithful representation. In the uh, in the symmetric group, uh, then uh, the pair of permutations, uh, images of uh, uh, of the generators of G, gives a, a square tall surface with monogamy group G. Right, and uh, mm, this combinatorial description. Mm, 
can be uh, applied to study uh, to study square tau sources uh, by a simple uh, correspondence of notions. Uh, so, for instance, if uh, the origami, an origami is connected if and only if the non group is transitive, uh, an origami belongs to the stratum with parameters d1, etc., ds, if the commutator of the permutations is a product of disjoint cycles of length d1 plus 1, etc., ds plus 1. And uh, uh, a square tau source is primitive if and only if the monogamy group is a primitive subgroup of uh, Sn, right? And uh, in, uh, in the theory of permutation groups, the classical notion is that of primitivity of subgroups. Uh, actually, uh, a permutation subgroup is called primitive if the only gene variant partitions of uh, the set from one to n are the trivial ones, right? So singletons and uh, the whole set. There are two trivial uh, gene variant partitions. So uh, here you have examples of monotomy groups and uh, the, the cases when the monotomy group is primitive. So you see that uh, for the uh, corner origamis, the monodromy, the monodromy group is a m plus a, is just alternating group or symmetric group of some degree, uh, and uh, it's always primitive. Uh, and actually, we have the inverse as well. Uh, you you will see that in most cases, if an origami is primitive, uh, the monodromy group is either a n or a s n. Right. Um, there is a natural action of uh, the group GL plus 2R on the modular spaces. Uh, on the modular spaces of pairs, re a, a compact Riemann surface equipped with a holomorphic one form. It is easily given in uh, local coordinates, naturally given. Uh, geometrically, if you present an, a square tau surface on the plane, then um, uh, <coughs> You just normally act by uh, the group GL to Z on square tau solves. It turns out that if you act by uh, as an integer matrix with uh, denominate with determinant uh, plus minus one, then what you will get is another square tau surface. Not just some translation surface, but uh, a square tau surface. So GL to Z acts on the square tau surfaces. It preserves the strata. And also, uh, it, this action preserves the monogamy group. So that's why I said that a monogamy group is an invariant. It actually, it's a, it's a GL to Z invariant. And the which group? is uh, of an origami is its stabilizer for this action. So it's denoted by GL, GL or. Open, open problems uh, in the subject is classifying gel to Z orbits of uh, square tau surfaces and first of all of primitive uh, of origamis. And uh, also description, for instance, description of subgroups of gel to Z, which is which groups of origamis. Um, and um, I, I, I have already told that uh, if you have a primitive origami, uh, normally, generically, the monogamy group is either a n or s n. Here we have a, a result, a more precise result, uh, saying that uh, starting from this number of squares, any primitive square tau surfaces in the stratum, it, in the stratum, is uh, of monogamy group A n or S n, right? And uh, in some cases, we know to find sharp bounds. This is not sharp bounds, sharp bounds. But in simple strata, uh, we can give sharp sharp bounds. 
and to so this is an example when when the theory of permutation groups helps studying square dolls offices right uh, this is a consequence actually this is a consequence uh, of one of two uh, known <coughs> theorems from permutation groups uh, some kind some kind of refinements of uh, Jordan theorem I, I will talk about afterwards so there is a notion of square of regular square tall surfaces um, a regular square square tall surface is a square tall surface uh, with a monogamy group of order equal to the number of squares this means that uh, otherwise, if you consider a, 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 an, a, an arbitrary group with a uh, finite two generator group with a pair of permutation with a pair of generators, and you consider a Kelly diagram for the group, uh, then by looking on the graph, uh, one assigns one constructs a square tall surface. Uh, the number of elements of the group will be exactly the number of of squares of the square tall surface. So uh, normally, regular square tall surfaces are kind of large. And uh, here's an example, another example when uh, studying permutation groups, some question connected to permutation groups, purely uh, group theoretical, uh, helps understanding uh, Square tall surfaces. Well, actually, uh, well, well, if you, what what the theorem th uh, says is that uh, in uh, the group A n, starting uh, if if a permutation if a permutation has large support, so it fixes few points, then it is always the commutator of a generating pair of a n okay uh, so just to uh, uh, to give some history uh, initially there was a result of or telling that any permutation in a n is a commutator of of some of some pair uh, but now the question is harder here is to understanding those permutations which are uh, commutators of generating pairs. <coughs> so why uh, we needed such a result is to understand how many strata there are with the, uh, containing a square tall surface with a given uh, monogamy group uh, equal to some alternating group. So more precisely, uh, the number of different strata containing a regular origami with monogamy group AD uh, has an exponential growth. And uh, the proof of, uh, of the theorem relies, for instance, on uh, the theorem of Jordan, the classical theorem of Jordan, telling that uh, any, uh, any primitive subgroup of SN containing a P cycle, where P is prime of less than N minus, two, N minus two, uh, then a G is either N or SN, okay? And is the calorie of the serum just uh, immediate calorie if that is the fact that the monogamy group of any primitive origami in the stratum H2, the, the the simplest stratum uh, is either alternating or symmetric. Uh, but uh, this color is somehow more difficult. Mm, um, so the strata H2, we know from uh, Zor Anton Zorich that in strata, stratum H H2, uh, any square tall surface has either uh, one cylinder or two, two cylinders. Here you have the picture with uh, description of one cylinder square tall surfaces. 
this side, is, uh, this part is identified to this part, this part is identified to this part, and this one to this one. So kind of twist here. Um, and uh, two cylinder square tau surfaces are given by uh, six parameters, right? They can be drawn like this. So there are two types of uh, square tau surfaces in uh, the stratum H2. The simplest stratum it's of square tau surfaces with uh, uh, one singularity, conical singularity of, of angle 6 pi. And uh, we know a lot of things about the stratum H2. Mm. We know that uh, it's a theorem of Macmillan that uh, there are exactly two del to z orbits of primitive and square tau surfaces for n odd and exactly one orbit for n even. Okay. Uh, here, and they actually they are distinguished by the uh, monogamy group. So the monogamy group in this case is a complete invariant, but normally it is not. Um, uh, there are some examples of uh, square tau surfaces in uh, in uh, the in the stratum H2, with, uh, which are representative the the common representative of uh, the orbits. Uh, and uh, n not only we know that there are two uh, or at most two gel to z orbits in the stratum H2, but also. Frenchman and Lerev and Royer calculated the length of the uh, of the orbits. If there are two orbits, then the lengths are given by these formulas. And if there is one orbit, then the uh, it's just the sum of the two formulas. Okay. And uh, based on the uh, the methods of and based on the uh, on the study of square tau surfaces in general, uh, recently with the high school students, we found uh, uh, two formulas for to to calculate some mm, some things in uh, in the permutation group S n. More precisely, the number of pairs of permutations in S n with a three cycle commutator is given by this formula. So it's kind of a discrete convolution of, uh, of, of this sum with uh, the, uh, the partition function times factorial, n factorial. And sigma, sigma three is the sum of uh, third powers of the dividers of, uh, of k. Sigma one is the sum of the dividers of k. This formula is effective. So it, uh, with computer, it's very, it's very fast to calculate knowing the values of uh, the partition functions, uh, the partition function, uh, obviously. Uh, and uh, also, the number of those permutations which generate a n and a sn or a sn with three cycle commutarity again uh, is given by this formula. So the same as the formula kind of this, it's the sum of these two formulas times n factorial, okay? And uh, uh, knowing these formulas, one can uh, apply the result uh, to estimate a, a, a weighted sum of uh, characters of reducible representations of SN, right? So as a corollary, uh, we obtained that uh, such a sum over all irreducible representations where chi is a character and dime, of dime rho is dimension, uh, is bounded by these two expressions, okay? So this result is an example when the study of square tau surfaces helps understanding permutations. Okay, so 
have both ways. Um, I guess that's all. I would like to thank you for your attention.